We sing our songs that you know when they nailed my Jesus to that old tree, the devil dance around glee. I'm not too sure about that. Amen. I'm pretty sure you didn't want him to make it to the cross. Amen. Hallelujah. It's just a good song to write, I guess. Brother Sweet says it just rhymed. <laughs> Amen. I'm not so sure about that because the Bible says he made a show of them. Oh, talking about the enemy, talking about the kingdom of darkness, made a show of them openly. Amen. Oh, my, my, my. Whenever he cried from the top of the cross, it is finished. The enemy knew exactly what he meant. That was it. Amen. That was it. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. Isn't that wonderful today to have victory in Jesus? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Aren't, aren't you glad today that you know that there's victory in His victory at the cross? Amen. Oh. That we can find our safety in His victory today. Amen. Yes. We can enter into His rest today. Amen. Amen. He is our Sabbath. Yeah. Amen. He is our place of rest today. He has became our Sabbath. Amen. Our place of rest because He worked. He did the work. Come on. You see, we still we got a lot of people, and we for a lot of times maybe we try, still try to do it. Ain't got it worked out of us. Amen. But He did the work. Amen. Amen. Now we're supposed to enter into His rest. That's right. Amen. Right. Enter into His rest by faith in what He accomplished for the people. Amen. And realize that it is not in us. Amen. We would never. I've never seen a day whenever people. We have so many people. I'm talking about people that at one time have known and tasted the grace of God. Right. Have decided that that's not enough, and now they're trying to work their way there. Yeah. Now they're trying to keep the holy days and the feasts and the Sabbath and yeah. the Torah and all of that stuff. Trying to trying to make themselves good enough. Yeah. You're beating your head against a brick wall. Amen? Right. Ain't but one way to be good, and that's through the blood of Jesus. Amen? Hell, now, does that give us a license to sin? No. Amen? Right. I don't know which makes me more aggravated. Those that think that they can work their way there or those that think that, you know, well, I'm saved. I'm not perfect. I'll just do whatever I want to. I ain't sure you're saved. Amen? Right. There's a difference between being in grace, amen, and living in sin. Right. Amen? Hallelujah. True. I'm thankful today that I know the difference. Amen. Thankful today that I know that my faith lies in what He has done right. on the cross of Calvary. That's right. And that even though there are certainly things that we should do and things that we should not do and, and different things like that, yeah. those things don't save us. Come Amen. On. And whenever we fail and we fall and we have our shortcomings, yeah. thank God for His grace and His right. mercy and His love and His blood that covers a multitude of sins. Amen. Yeah. His love that covers a multitude of sins through the blood of Jesus and the sacrifice right. that He made on the cross of Calvary. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to go this morning to Matthew the 16th chapter. I want to talk to you a few minutes this morning. Probably not for very long. Brother Bill, what's that mean? Good, don't mean a thing. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Appreciate Brother Beal this morning. Amen. Having my back. <laughs> my, my, my. Mark, did I say Matthew? Matthew. I'm sorry. Mark, the 16th chapter. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize for that. Mark, the 16th chapter. Hallelujah. Amen. When you have it, say amen. 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 My, my, my. <clears throat> We're going to talk today, actually our sermon consists of two words. I'll tell you what those are in just a minute. And we're talking today, and you might think, Brother Billy, that needs to be a yeah. Resurrection Sunday message. Amen? Hallelujah. But this will preach anytime. Mark the 16th chapter, the first verse says, And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of, G of James and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. Talking about Jesus, this is after the resurrection. I mean, after the, uh, this is after, well, it might have been after the resurrection. It was after the crucifixion and after he'd been laid in the borrowed tomb of Joseph yeah. of Arimathea. And they're getting their spices together. And I guess it was because the time they got there, he was gone. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. So they get their spices together and they're going to, to the tomb. I don't know how they thought they were going to get in there. 
because it was guarded by the guards and it was supposed to be sealed with a signet ring, amen, of the ruler of that day that nobody was supposed to touch that, amen? Right. But they were going, amen, in faith, I guess, believing that the Lord, that God would make a way somehow, some way, yeah. that they would be able to do as according to their custom or, you know, maybe they assumed that since it was their custom, they would allow them to do it. Yeah. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, yeah. They came into the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. Yeah. <laughs> the sun, my, 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 the real sun had already risen. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. S-O-N done got up. Yeah. My, 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 victorious over the grave. Hallelujah. Amen. And they said amongst themselves, yeah. who shall roll the stone away mm. from the door of the sepulcher? So they get to the tomb, and the Bible says, when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away. Right. For it was very great. This wasn't just no little rock, amen. This was a great big stone yeah. that they had probably took a platoon of soldiers to roll it up there, Brother Sleese, and All get right. it fixed to where it's supposed to go. Anyway, no matter how many it took, it was huge, and it was more than these women were going to be able to handle. Yeah. And they looked, and the stone wasn't there no more. It wasn't at the door. It had been rolled away, Sister Nancy, from the door. Yeah. Amen. Uh -huh. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in long white garment, and they were affrighted. Yeah. Amen. They go into the tomb expecting, I don't know exactly what they were thinking. Maybe they thought, oh no, the stones rolled away. Maybe somebody's took the body. I know that's what some of them thought. These ladies here, they go into the tomb, maybe not knowing exactly what they're going to see. I'm pretty sure they wasn't ready for what's about to happen. Right. They walk in there, and there's a young man, the Bible says, he's clothed in white, amen? Clothed in a white garment. My, 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 and they were affrighted. And he saith unto them, be not affrighted, be not afraid, amen? Don't be scared. You see Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified, Oh, my, my, my. He is risen. Yeah. He is not here. Amen. Behold the place where they laid him. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Oh, my goodness. You're talking about having a time. My goodness. I know they were they were confused a little bit, not knowing what was going on. Hallelujah. Right. I just said, he ain't here no more. Look here, this is where they had him laid. Yeah. He's not there any longer. Come on. But the angel yeah. wouldn't stop with those words. Let's see what else he said. Mm -hmm. You know, everything in this book is there for a reason. Yeah. Amen. I know we got people cherry picking it this morning and saying, well, that there ain't, that don't, that don't have any benefit for us. Amen. I, I know that there are some of the things when you go back into the old law and you go back into the Old Testament, I know there are some things in there that, you know, don't apply to us today. We're not going to take a lamb out here this afternoon and go find us an altar and sacrifice it. Amen. But there's a lesson to be learned in the fact that you read that. Amen. There is something, every bit of this, the Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for you. Amen. It's profitable. It's profitable for doctrine. It's profitable for, for reproof and, and instruction in righteousness. That you can be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. It is profitable for you today Amen. to know these things. The Lord has a reason for putting, for allowing the translators to put. I know that the translators did not claim, oh, we feel an inspiration of God. But I'm telling you, these men were inspired. Amen. And moved upon by the Holy Ghost, whether they even realized, you know, sometimes God used you and you don't even know He's used you. Amen. Amen. I know sometimes we think we've got to have this big experience with God and know for Him to use us, but sometimes, sometimes just in your everyday life, God used you and you didn't even know it. That's right. You didn't even know it. I told you this before, I'll tell you again. You probably get old and tired of my old tales. Hallelujah. No, I was in Walmart and there was a lady in there and I, you know, she goes to church here in the community and, and whenever she said hello to us and I said hello to her, and yeah. I smiled from ear to ear. That's just what I do. Amen. I didn't know it meant any more than it usually means. Amen. And it wasn't long after that we were in service with her and she said, you'll never know what that did for me. She said, whenever you smiled at me, I felt a low lift. I felt something happen. I didn't know what was going on, but God was used to see God do the same thing with you. God uses you even when you don't even know it. Come on. Sometimes the devil uses you and you don't even know he's doing it. Amen? Yeah. With your old stinking attitude and the way you treat people. God ain't using you when you do those kind of things. Amen? Somebody's using you, but it ain't God. Amen? 
So sometimes the Lord uses you don't even know it. So these men that were moved upon by the Spirit of the Lord to translate, God set everything into place, amen, for it to happen, amen. From the prayer of God's martyr, whenever he was trying to get the, the word translated, when he said God opened the eyes of the King of England, to the time that King James decided, well, you know, I think we need, yeah, you think you need, because God moving upon your mind saying you don't think you need, we know you need, an English translation so that the Catholic Church and the powers that be can't keep the word of God from the people. So he moves upon the king and he puts together the greatest translators that the world has ever known. Come on. The most knowledgeable men that the world has ever known. Right. With the best documents that the world has ever known. Right. The closest thing to the real deal that anybody has ever been able to lay their hands on. Oh, These on. men today that translated, they don't have the, the material that those men had oh. when they sat down and began to translate the King James Version. Amen? Come on. And they go over it with a fine tooth comb. They just didn't go through there and make men, you know, well, guess what? We're starting our, 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 our study Bible and then not... You know, four weeks later, we're done with our study Bible. No, seven years. Yeah. Scripture after Scripture. And Brother Bill, they'd go over this one. And they said, well, this here, send it on to the boys over here. And they'd go over the same Scripture with the same fine tooth comb to make sure it was translated from the Greek and from the Hebrew as close as it could be in the English language. Amen? God has a reason for setting things in motion the way that they are set. Amen? And for 200 plus years, it's the Word of God. Everybody knows it's the Word of God. It's the closest thing we've got to the Hebrew and to the Greek until somebody as so stupid they think they're smart comes along and says well I think we can do it a little bit better how you don't have the translators that they had you don't have the documents that they have you don't have the knowledge that they have how do you think you're going to do it better come on brother amen come on you can't exhort it you can't do it better come on so anyway that didn't cost you nothing I threw it in there for free praise the Lord I said all that to say this as brother Ronnie used to say Every bit of this, there's a reason that God has in this book what is in this book. That's right. It's been preserved. That's right. Every word, amen, is amen. preserved. Guaranteed. It's either God's word or it ain't. That's it. Amen. That's right. Let's see what they, let's see what the angel says. Don't be afraid. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Yeah. Behold the place where they laid him. Yeah. But go your way. Tell his disciples. Mm -hmm. Now this will be the only book, the only one of the Gospels that adds these next two words. Go your way, tell his disciples, and Peter. Yeah. That might not mean nothing to you, but it would mean the world to Peter. Yeah. All right. Oh, I can feel the Holy Ghost. Praise Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Go your way and tell his disciples. And Peter, yeah. that he goeth before you into Galilee, uh -huh. there shall ye see him, right. as he said unto you. Now, as I said, this is the only one of the four Gospels, Brother Sleece, that you will find it worded this way. Tell his disciples oh, and God. Peter. But as with all Scripture, there is a reason for this. There is a purpose for this. Right. There was certainly a reason for the angel saying this right. to the ladies for them to go back and tell the men. Amen? Because oh. you've got to remember what's been going on here. I know you already know it, but let's refresh our memory a little bit. Mm. Peter had denied Jesus. Right. This Peter that had stood face to face with our Lord and Savior and said, I'll never deny you. Right. Not only will I not, not, not deny you, but I'll go with you even to death. I'm ready to go now, Lord. Right. The same Peter that Jesus would look at and say, you'll deny me three times before the cock grows. Right. And Peter said, I won't do it. <coughs> I will not. Uh, How many people ever said, I ain't never going to fail the Lord again? Yeah. Come on. Amen. Oh my goodness. Amen. Amen. You get up, you feel the victory, you're on the mountaintop, and you're thinking you whip every devil comes along and you ain't never going to mess up again. Yeah. That's the way Peter fell. Come on. He said, Lord, I won't deny you. Right. So you've got to remember where Peter's at. What he's been going through. Amen. Amen. Right. You've got to remember that Peter had, not only had he denied, can you imagine how Peter must have been feeling during those days that Jesus, after he'd been crucified and before they knew that he was resurrected. Right. Peter stands out there in the 
out on the patio or whatever, out in the hallway there of the judgment place where they had Jesus before the people. And I suppose the judgment seat, the judgment hall's doors were open because the Bible says, and I'll give you the scripture for as a matter of fact. We'll read it. Luke, this 22nd chapter. Turn over to Luke, the 22nd chapter. We find in this, in the account that the Bible gives about Peter, it says that Peter followed when they took Jesus to be judged, and he followed in the distance. And we find Peter warming himself by the fire outside of the judgment hall. And yeah. We find people coming to Him and saying things like, you're one of them and Amen. you knew Him. And uh -huh. Peter would say, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. I don't know Him. Yeah. I wasn't with Him. I don't know Him. Yeah. And when he did this the third time, the Bible says the cock crew in mm. Luke 22 and 61 says that the Lord turned, talking about Jesus, and He looked upon Peter. Yeah. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he said unto him before the cock crow, Thou shalt deny me thrice. Amen. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. That's Luke 22 and 62. I'm trying to give you some kind of a little bit of glimpse of what Peter was going through. Yeah. And why it was so important that the angel would tell these ladies, Go and tell my disciples and Peter. Why was it important that Jesus would give the charge to this angel to say, you yeah. tell them these words. Go tell my disciples yeah. and Peter. Amen. Come on. Peter had denied Him. The one that he had walked with. The one that he had seen raise the dead. Yeah. The one that he had seen open blinded eyes and open deaf ears. Right. And touch the withered hands and heal. Amen. Come on. The lepers. Come on. He had denied Him. When we find Him here, when He denies Him, it's bad enough that He had denied Him. And not only had He denied Him with the bill, but the third time He denies Him, Jesus looks from the judgment hall at Peter. And Peter looks into the face of the one that He just denied. The man that He had stood and said, I'll never deny you. I'll go with you all the way. I'm ready to give my life for you. I'll lay down my life right along with you. Lord. Wow. And he looks into the face and the eyes of that man of Galilee. Yeah. So full of love. And the Bible says he goes out and he wept bitterly. I can't even imagine. I can't imagine Peter and how he felt. Yeah. Looking into the face of the one that he loved. Amen. I have no doubt he loved Jesus. Yeah. Amen. But he was flesh. Mm. Just like you. You know how easy it is for me to point my finger at Brother Bill and say, look what he did. I don't understand right. that. Amen. <laughs> I had a preacher send me an email last night from right here around this area, not from this town, but pretty close running down another preacher from right here in this area. And you'd know both of them if I named their names. Talking about something that preacher had done before and he don't understand how this one can do and that one can do this. <clears throat> and I wrote him back and I said, surely you believe in repentance and restoration? Yeah. Surely, you believe, you, surely you believe in forgiveness for where would we all be without it? Amen. 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 That's true. I don't know why he felt the need to throw that in there because we were discussing something else completely different. I don't know why he felt the need to throw that in there. He said, I don't know how you can fellowship with this man. I don't know how you could do this after all he's done. How do you think they treated Peter? All right. Amen. How do you think Peter felt now? Yeah. Peter didn't feel worthy. And probably some of the brethren there made him feel not worthy. Mm. Amen. Right. Can you back it up with Scripture, Brother Billy? No, but I can back it up with the way we are. Right. Amen. Oh. We are ten times quicker to judge than we are to forgive. Amen. Oh, right. Say Amen. It. oh I know that's hard this morning. Amen. But it's the truth anyway. Right. We are so much quicker to judge somebody, especially when it ain't us that went through it. Oh, especially when it's not us that messed up. Oh, 
Amen. 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 When it's us that messed up, you know how we are. Oh, God, have mercy. When it's somebody else, it's what are you doing? Yeah. How in the world can they be used of God? Yeah. I believe in repentance. I believe in right. forgiveness. And I believe in restoration. Come on. Peter speaks of the experience that. He goes out and he weeps bitterly. In, in the Greek, the word bitterly means violently. Yeah. It means a piercing, violent cry. Uh -huh. I believe Peter probably wept till there was no tears left. All right. Have you ever cried until you felt like you couldn't cry no more? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. The man that he had walked with, fellowshiped with, pledged his life to, left his livelihood for. Yeah. He was a fisherman. Right. Walked away from that. Even put his family on. He had a family. Amen. Right. Jesus healed his mother-in-law. True. So he had to have a wife. Yes, Amen. Sir. Jesus said, come and follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. Yes, sir. And this rough and ragged fisherman left his nets yeah. and followed this man from Galilee mm -hmm. and saw the dead raised. Yeah. And the sick healed. Come on. And those that had no hope, he saw them. Brother Bill, he saw hope in their eyes once more. Right. He saw the woman with the issue of blood yeah. that for 12 years had suffered and lost her blood and lost her strength. Yeah. He saw her crawl through the crowd that day and touch the hem of his garment Come on. and walk away completely whole. Hallelujah. Sure. <laughs> he saw him whenever he went to the tomb of Lazarus and they were mourning because he'd been dead four days. And Jesus said, roll the tomb away. Somebody said just a few weeks ago that Jesus had to wrestle the devil for the keys of death when he went to hell. Jesus already had the keys to death. That's right. Amen. Had he not, he couldn't have raised Lazarus. Had he not, he couldn't have raised the woman's son that they brought the funeral procession through. Had he not, he couldn't have went into the little girl's room and said, Talitha, come in. Dams are rise. Amen. Jesus already had the keys that the Father had given him. He said, Brother Billy, prove that I will. He said, I have the power to lay it down, the power to take it up. Where did he say get that got that authority from? The Father. Amen. He already had the keys to death. He didn't have to go. The devil never had the keys to death. Amen. I don't always somebody find me the scripture and show me where he had the keys to death and hell and Jesus had to wrestle them away. No! Jesus was God in the flesh and had all authority and all power. Amen? When he spoke to death, death got out of the way. Right. Loose your hold on Lazarus and Lazarus comes up. Right. He didn't have to say that. He just said, Lazarus, come forth. Uh -huh. And death has to woo. Yeah. I know that voice. Yeah. Amen? Yes. Oh my goodness. Come on. So he'd been there. Amen. And Lazarus come forth. Right. He sat there at the Last Supper. Come on. As Jesus would say, one of you will betray me. Yeah. It might have been Peter. Mm. And when Jesus said, I gotta go, you know, I'm gonna be delivered up, I'm gonna be crucified. Yeah. Was it Peter that said, Not so, Lord? Far be it from you. I'm pretty sure it was. He was there when Jesus spoke these words. All right. There's another time that he was there. Listen to me, church. I wish you could get this this morning. Yeah. When he said, If you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my Father. Amen. What had Peter just done? Denied him. He had denied him before right. men. Amen. So he goes out, Sister Nancy. And Brother Bill, he weeps violently. And I have no doubt this morning that the words that Jesus spoke, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my Father. If you're ashamed of me in front of men, I will be ashamed of you. Oh, come on. So Peter, probably weeping the whole three days that Jesus right. is gone or they think He's gone. Yeah. I don't know if anybody put their arm around Him and said, it would be alright, Peter. I know He was suffering. Yeah. 
I know that when the ladies, whenever the angels spoke to them and said, go and tell His disciples, yeah. and Peter, amen, that He's not here, that He went before them into Galilee, yeah. and that you'll see Him there. I don't know what it meant to the other disciples, but I know this morning what it meant to Peter. Amen. Hallelujah. So the ladies go running back to them and they say, hey, yeah. He's risen. Yeah. Come on. And the angel said to tell His disciples, and Peter. Yeah. And can you imagine Peter? Right. Broken hearted. Yeah. Full of grief. Feeling like he's the biggest failure that ever set foot. How many people ever felt like he was the biggest failure that ever set foot on planet Earth? Amen. Come on. I know there's some of us today that it felt like Brother Bill, we was the biggest failure. We messed up and we messed up bad. Amen. And not only did we not feel like we were worthy of forgiveness, some people made us feel like we wasn't worthy of forgiveness. Right. And Peter hears the lady saying, yeah. he said, don't tell his disciples. Peter don't even know if he considered him one of his disciples anymore. Because really? if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my father. Right. Amen. What Go tell his disciples. Yeah. And Peter... <laughs> and for the first time since he denied him and he went out and he wept bitterly hope comes back into Peter and said oh wait a minute are you sure that's what he's saying are you sure are you sure that he mentioned me by name I thought he no I thought I was beyond forgiveness listen to me church whatever you've done there's still forgiveness for you today amen oh my lord Praise the Lord. And Peter. Hallelujah. He said, Are you sure? Are you sure he mentioned me by name? Oh, Peter might even did a jig. Amen. Are you sure he mentioned me by name? Are you sure he said his disciples? How many times has somebody told you something and you said, Are you sure? Yeah. Now tell me exactly what they said. Yeah. Tell me exactly what you remember. Yeah. I remember Peter. He said his disciples and Peter. Hallelujah. His disciples. Yes. And Peter. So for the first time in probably the days that Jesus since Jesus um, was crucified, since he denied him and went out yeah. and began to weep bitterly. Mm. Peter <laughs> feels joy for the first time. Amen. He hadn't forgot about me. Right. It's yeah. not too late. Yeah. There's still you know how quick we are to cut people off. Right. Oh, there ain't no hope for them. Shut up. As long as there's breath in your body, there's hope for you today. Amen. I worked with some guys and there was a man there that came to me and they said, you better not fellowship with him. Um, We're praying down judgment on him. Yeah. He's a reprobate and God has cut him off. They said, if it rains on him, it'll get on you too. I said, you guys are crazy. As long as there's breath in his body, there's hope for him today. Amen. As long as there's breath in your body, there's hope for you today. As long that you may be out there, you may feel like you've messed up. There's no forgiveness for you. People may make you feel like you've messed up and there's no forgiveness for you. But God wants you to know today there is forgiveness. There is restoration. There is oh my 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 my. There is reconciliation for you today. Hallelujah. Amen. His mercy endures forever. Thank you, Brother David. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. See, Jesus had said in Matthew 10 and 32, and I'm almost done. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before me, and him will I confess before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before me, and him will I deny before my Father which is in heaven. Peter had done that. Yes. Amen. But now, oh, glory, glory, glory. Praise the Lord. Peter might have felt some of that resurrection power. Yeah. Amen. 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 Go tell Lord. his disciples and Peter. Amen. You know what he was saying to Peter? I ain't done with you yet. Yeah. Mom. I ain't done with you. Yeah. Mom. Isn't, his, isn't his grace and mercy so wonderful? Amen. 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 Yes. Isn't His grace and His mercy so wonderful? Mm. You remember where Paul said over there, he said, I was a blasphemer, but I've done it in ignorance. Yeah. Right. Amen. If anybody ever blasphemed, it was Paul when he was Saul. Amen. Yeah. Before he was converted, before he was born again. Amen. All the damage that he did. Mm. But he said, I've done it in ignorance. Right. Thank God for His mercy. Amen. Thank God for His mercy. Yes. 
Thank God for his mercy. 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 Amen. The angel said, go tell Peter too. Amen. I hope you got that this morning. Amen. I hope you got that this morning. Yes, sir. Can I drop this nugget in your lap this morning? Yes. Before we go. Hallelujah. I don't think I have to explain it much better than I've explained it. Amen. Come on. Oh, I don't know if I can't explain it any more than I've explained it. If I keep trying to explain it, I'm going to keep getting happy. Go ahead. Amen. Obey the Lord. <clears throat> I asked Reese this last night. And you may know it. I ain't going to ask you because you may make me look dumb. <laughs> I asked Reese last night, I said, have you ever read in the Bible, you know, whenever you ask people who did Jesus appear to first, we always think about the, uh, was, it, was it Mary that went to the garden and she thought he was the gardener and when he spoke to her. Oh, Mary Magdalene, Brother Tyler said, ain't you glad for the kids that knows the Word of God? Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> So we name off Mary Magdalene and we talk about the men on the road to Emmaus whose hearts burned within them when he walked with them and they didn't know who he was. And but he, they said when he talked to us, our hearts burned within us. And when they sat down around the fire and he broke the bread, their eyes were open, they knew who he was then. Yeah. Did you know out of all of the disciples that Jesus appeared to, he appeared to Peter first. All right. Did you know that? You might already know that, but let me give you a scripture for that. You find in Luke, the 24th chapter, if you'll read that entire chapter, now the Bible doesn't give the account. It just says that it happened. Yeah. I don't know where it took place. Maybe Peter was out weeping on a rock. I don't know where he was at. Yeah. Luke 24, if you read that whole chapter, it talks about the men that were on the road to Emmaus. All right. If you go down to the 33rd verse, when they realized that it was Jesus and when He broke the bread mm -hmm. and He disappeared from amongst them, mm -hmm. the Bible says they rose up the same iron, they returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to who? Simon. Simon. To Simon. Okay, if you need more proof than that, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, you can write this down. 1 Corinthians 3 and 4, 15, 3 and 4, I'm sorry. <clears throat> this is Paul talking. It says, For I delivered unto you first of all <clears throat> that which is also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that He was buried and He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. You have to go on down to verse 5, I'm sorry. And that He was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. Say, Brother Billy, who was Cephas? If you go to John, the first chapter in the 42nd verse, it says, And he brought him to Jesus, and when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which by his, by his interpretation is a stone. So when the men of the road to Emmaus come and they say, Hey, Jesus has appeared to us, they say, Yeah, he also appeared to Simon. Then if you go over here into Paul's writings, Paul says, that he appeared, he was seen of Cephas, talking about Peter, then of the twelve. Right. Did you hear what I said? Amen. Can you imagine that? What are you talking about this morning? I'm talking about his mercy. I'm talking about his grace. If we were going to pick who was worthy to see him first among the disciples, now I realize the lady at the garden scene yeah. in the middle of the road of man's, if we were going to decide now who should he appear to first? Hey, how about James? I, I, I'm getting him. I never heard that James denied it. How about John the Beloved? Yeah. Amen? Come on. But see, John the Beloved wasn't the one that needed the comforting right now, this very second, this very minute. Amen? I'll say it. John the Beloved wasn't the one that was out weeping because he had denied him. Right. John the Beloved wasn't the one out weeping, hearing the words, if you deny me before me, and I deny you before my Father. Come on. He goes and he appears to Peter. Right. <clears throat> my goodness. God. Write those scriptures down. That's a good piece of trivia for you this morning, amen? Amen. You ever heard anybody else say that? Mm -hmm. 
I've been in church since I was five years old. I never heard anybody else say that. He appeared under, under Peter, Cephas, then under the rest of them. So somewhere or another, I don't know where it happened. Amen. He appears to Peter. And he appears to the rest of them. Not because he was trying to show Peter some kind of favoritism, because we're all his, you know, if you're blood bought, you're his child, and he loves all of us the same. Right. Because Peter was the one that was suffering the most at that time. Amen. Right. Amen. Peter right. was the one that was suffering the most. Yes, sir. What a message this morning. Go tell his disciples and Peter. Amen. And Peter. Thank God. Yeah. And Peter would go on, and y'all know. Peter would go on to be one of the greatest preachers. Yeah. He would stagger out on the day of Pentecost, drunk in the Holy Ghost, oh. and preach a message where thousands of souls would be saved. Yeah. He would look at the lame man at the gate and say, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give it to you. Right. Amen. 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 He would be the one that they'd lay the people out beside the street so that if his shadow was cast upon them, they would, might be healed. Amen. Amen. This man that had denied him. I'm talking about restoration this morning. The church probably wouldn't give him time of day. Amen. Come on. Say it. Amen. And we're all used mightily of God. I'm just trying to tell you some of the things that Peter had happened in his life. Right. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. And I doubt very seriously if he ever forgot those two words and Peter. Praise the Lord. Amen. I doubt if he ever forgot those words. I know I wouldn't have. I know I wouldn't have. Amen. Amen. Go tell his disciples and Peter. The one that denied me. The one that's weeping vehemently. And then such sorrow. Tell him that I mentioned him by name. Oh, my son. Tell him. God. Isn't that wonderful this morning? Yes, sir. God's mercy and His grace go far beyond what we can grasp, Brother Sweet. Right. Amen. I hope you can grasp some of what I said this morning. And I hope that if you're out there watching, if you're out there listening, if you get this on CD or cassette, or I even wrote about it in the newsletter, somehow, some way, you get the message that God ain't through with you. Right. There is repentance, there is forgiveness, and there is restoration today. Amen. Through Jesus and His finished work to the cross. Somebody else this morning have something before we go. Oh, Brother Isaac.